All right, so we're looking at example seven here. And here we're going to now graph the phase shift. So we've been talking about phase shift. We talked about direction and all that good stuff. Now we're going to actually graph it out. So first off, let's go ahead and find our phase shift. And even before we do that, let's make sure we know how to change that over to a fraction. We need to make sure that's a fraction first before we actually deal with anything else. And again, it's understood to be a 1 right there in front of theta. It's a 1 there. So when we, when we write this over, we're really talking about 1 half theta plus pi. So 1 half theta plus pi. So now that we have that set apart and broken apart, we should be able to figure out what the C is, figure out what the phase shift is, and then go from there. All right, so here, what is the C for this problem? It should be pi, right? That part right there, that gives you what C is. Then K must be what's in front of theta, which is perfect. Okay, now, first off, C should tell us what direction to move in. And because there's a positive pi here, C is positive, it means we should be moving left this is positive remember those opposite of what you think so phase shift tells us how far to move so again we know that's negative c over k so that's a negative pi divided by one half and again we do keep change flip so negative pi times two over one so negative two pi this negative pi times 2 is negative 2 pi. It's over 1, so it's negative 2 pi. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take that, what we just found, and graph it. Also here, since we have the phase shift, our period kind of changes also because we have a k here. So it's going to find those things really quickly too. So let's go find our period and our phase shift really quick like so we can go ahead and do all this great stuff. So, with it, let's go ahead and go look at our period. So we already know what k is. Here we know it's 2 pi over k. And we know k is 1 half, so 2 pi over 1 half. And again, we get to do keep change flip. Like I said, it's coming back a whole lot, so you can't just forget it. And then that gives us 4 pi for our period. Okay, so our period is 4 pi, so that means if it's 4 pi, that changed our tick marks because we're supposed to go up to 2 pi for our, tick, our original tick marks. So let's change, let's find a new tick marks. Okay. And again, we take each one of our individual tick marks, our original ones. And we divide it by our k. Just take each one of those original, and we divide them by k. And again, k we know is what we just found up top. k was 1 half. So we divide each one of these by k. And we need to simplify each one of these down. And we already did this, if you remember, back on... Um, on how much example was that? I believe it was example example five. I believe we did it on that. I think it was example five, part B. So here, these are the same tick marks as that. And so here, we get zero. Zero divided by anything is just zero. We do keep change flip for this one. So we keep the pi over two, change the multiplication, and we flip this to a one. We have pi times 2 over 1, 3 pi over 2 times 2 over 1, and 2 pi times 2 over 1. So we keep each one of those. And we should be able to see that things cancel out, and we should be able to simplify things down fast. Those twos cancel out, these twos cancel out. So we have 0, we have just pi left over. 
here we have 2 pi, we multiply straight across, it gives us 3 pi, and this gives us 4 pi when we multiply straight across. So 2 times 2 is 4 pi, 3 pi here, the only thing that's left over, pi times 2 is 2 pi, and then pi is left over here, and then 0. Okay, so we have our tig marks, and again with that, if that confused you, go back to what we did in example 5, part B, and we explained it and we did that in detail. So go back to example 5, part B, and look at what we did our tick marks there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and graph everything out. And let me get my pencil here. There we go. So let's go ahead and graph this out using all of this information that we have. And again, we're going to follow the same process we've been following. Right, so one, we label. So that's the first thing. Okay, one and negative one. Our new tick marks are here. So let's go ahead and put those in, in red. Okay, so we have, we labeled them. Then the second step is to graph the parent graph. Right, and this time we're talking about cosine, so that's up here, cosine. So we, pat, we plot those points for cosine. That steps here. And again, you have to remember this, where it starts and where it stops, where it pretty much begins and where it ends, really, pretty much. It's not one of those things of, oh yeah, I can just keep looking at the paper. Because when it's come time for that test, you can't have that paper. All right, so we plotted the parent graph. Now here, there's no amplitude. So three was amplitude. There is none. Four would be vertical shift. And there's not one for that either because there's nothing on the very back of it. And so the last thing is our phase shift. And so here, we said that we're going to move left. And we're going to move left to negative 2 pi. So here, what we're going to do we need to go ahead and put our tick marks here on this left side too because we said we're moving it left. So it means every point is going to move left to match up. And if you remember back when we did our parent graphs here, we said that it really kind of, these tick marks over here mirror these. So if this was pi, this one's negative pi. If the second one here was 2 pi, that means the second one over here is negative 2 pi. So we kind of mirror, mirror it, but one is negative, one's positive. Okay, so for our phase shift, do you get this last part for phase shift? What we are going to do is take this first point right here, the one that's on the y-axis, this part right here. And what we're always going to do is start off with that one. And we said we need to go negative 2 pi over to the left. So what would be the easiest thing to do is start here on the y-axis or the x-axis or whatever, wherever the part is right here at the origin or in this line. And we're gonna move this to until we get to negative two pi, which we said our phase shift is, negative two pi. So we're gonna move this point over till we get to negative two pi. So it means we're gonna move over one place, that's negative pi, move it over two places, and that's negative two pi. That's negative two pi. So how many places did we move it over? We moved over twice. So since we moved that over twice, that means every single point on this graph here is gonna move over two times. This moved over one, two. So this moves over two times. One, two. If this moves over two places. One, two. This moves over one, two. This moves over one, and again, that's because our phase shift is 
negative 2 pi. And so we move it over, starting it here, the x-axis, or the, um, the y-axis here, and then move it over left. And this is where we actually make it solid. And I'm going to write this note here so that we can kind of hopefully remember where it starts and everything. So I'm moving left or right. I need to start at the y-axis. We need to start at the y-axis there. All right, and also, let's go ahead and put this part here too. And for this problem, since we moved 0, 1 two places to the left, Every point moves two places to the left. 